I am an assistant head of a primary school in Finsbury Park, North London. Um, I've been there for 10 years now and in those 10 years I've taught from age 3 to 11 and I'm now in year 5, which is 9 and 10 year olds. Um, I only teach two days a week now, but um, I used to teach a full week and so I've kind of, over the years, taught lots of different things in lots of different ways and now I feel experienced and, and I know what I'm doing. Um, the school that I work in is very diverse. Um, we have 32 different languages and so a very high percentage of children have English as an additional language and um, therefore there are challenges that come along with that and so representing things visually is really important so that they can access what we're talking about if they don't understand the language. So if you enter our school you can see straight away everything is is visual. Um, we've got words in all sorts of different languages but everything is kind of prompted, you know, supported by, by drawings either that have been done by the children or the teachers or nowadays a lot via computers and I think that's where things have really changed um, whereas we used to have to draw our own visual timetables and pictures to support what we were delivering now we can pluck things off the internet, um, we have interactive whiteboards so although everything is still very visual to support the children in their learning it has kind of moved from us drawing to using drawing that is already created for us. Um, but it still plays an important part in children accessing the curriculum. And um, without those visual prompts, I think they wouldn't learn so easily um, because we all learn in different ways and, and visual is something that I think everybody needs to access what's going on around them. Um, example, we, I'm, I'm in charge of science and I love teaching science, but it's complicated. And we try and do lots of things practically and in involving the children in investigations and experiments and doing things. But when they are then encouraged to show how they have understood that, we often do that through drawing. They, they draw what they have learnt and I can support that in terms of kind of creating a structure for it. Um, so life cycles in science, looking at plants, it, you do that by drawing. It's, it's the easiest way to understand it because you can't show them that practically from start to finish in one lesson. So you have to use pictures to represent those different stages. So for example, I next half term actually, I'm, I'm going to be teaching life cycles and the children will be expected to draw their own but of course I need to represent that for them first. Now I will already have found something probably on the internet that I put up there to support them when we're discussing it as a class but then I also need to, I don't want them to just copy that, I want them to be able to understand each bit and be able to represent it, will draw it in their own way so that they understand it rather than just copying something that I've given them. Um, so I might, I might give them a template, for example. So if there are, how many stages of the life cycle are there for a plant? There are four. Then I might, I might draw kind of four sections so that they can clearly see what I'm expecting of them. Um, ask them how that they would represent the, the cycle, cycle and they would probably suggest arrows so that's what I would probably put in for them and then we would discuss um, each section so that they could kind of get some ideas but they I might then get the children to come up and draw the different parts so that they are actually showing me and, and demonstrating to me that they understood what we discussed on the carpet as a whole class and so we would end up with with some, maybe some labels to kind of prompt them when they they're doing the work in their books so we might have seeds um and they i'd get a child to come up and draw the seeds um we then have the the germination 
of those seeds with the shoots coming up, um, leading on to the, the shoots and, and um, the flower, not quite in my circle, flowering. And then of course is where you get the, the last stage where the flower um, dies and you end up with seeds dropping. So I suppose, I don't know what that bit's called, I suppose it's the reproduction stage of those seeds. And then you have the plant life cycle. I mean, obviously each plant is different, but you would hope that the children would understand that from using the pictures um, and the labels, and they could they could show those pictures themselves in in the different stages of development. And we would then go on to using that picture to plant seeds and go through the cycle. But of course that that takes a lot longer. So having this picture to start with and them showing that they understand it by using pictures would demonstrate their their understanding. We could revisit this at the end so that um, they could almost kind of check, have all those things taken place. But, you know, by drawing things very quickly like that, I'm modelling to them how the the process, the scientific process, what we're learning about, but also modelling to them how you draw those different stages, how you lay it out as a bit of a template and, and guidance for them to recreate that themselves. And children need that support in order to, to, to produce something like that. You can't just ask them, go and draw a life cycle of a plant. You have to give them the, the tools and the understanding of how to draw that and what your expectation is.